my last video took you to Hadrian's Wall and the famous Housestead's Fort. Today I want to visit its remarkable neighbor. Welcome to Vendelanda. Vendelanda sits just two miles southwest of Housestead's. A hinterland fort nestled behind Hadrian's Wall, Vendelanda had an extremely long and interesting history. First occupied in the late first century, and still occupied in the sixth, at least a hundred years after the fall of the Roman Empire. During those centuries, Vendelanda was built and rebuilt from the ground up at least seven times. As at Housesteads, I've recreated Vendelanda as it would have been about AD 235, not least because the third century fort is by far the best understood, with 85 years of ongoing archaeology behind it. You'll notice many similarities between the forts. Nearly all Roman forts had the same basic parts, though there were tons of variations in the details. Vendelanda's main street, the Via Principalis, takes you past granaries, the Principia, or headquarters, and the Praetorium, or commander's home. Just as at Housesteads, Vendelanda's Principia held a courtyard out front, with a large cross hall behind, housing the regimental shrine, offices, and a platform at one end for the commander to address his troops. Also as at Housesteads, the Praetorium was a Mediterranean-style courtyard villa, offering comfortable living space to the commander and his family, including libraries, a heated dining room, and a private toilet and bath suite. A bit of the Roman good life on the distant frontier. While Housesteads garrisoned about 800 infantry soldiers, Vendelanda of AD 235 housed some 400 infantry and about 120 cavalry. The infantry lived in monolithic barrack blocks in the northern part of the fort, while the cavalry shared accommodations with their own horses in the southern range. Bread ovens dotted the ramparts, built safely into the earth to prevent fires. Three communal latrines lined the fort's walls, their waste flushed out of the fort by an ingenious set of water channels and drains, and a unique and remarkable temple to Jupiter Dolicanus, discovered in 2009, sat in the northern section of the fort. But also like Housesteads, probably the most remarkable thing about Vendelanda Fort isn't the fort. A large, vibrant, and bustling town, or Vicus, grew up outside the fort walls in the 3rd century. And unlike Housesteads, where Vicus excavations ended in the 1930s, Vendelanda's has been extensively excavated for 85 years, with more work being done still this year. Vendelanda's may well be the best dug, best understood of any Roman settlement in northern England. Every building that you see here in the town is known from archaeology in the ground. The bathhouse was excavated around 1970. The main street, with its houses and butcher and shops and tavern, all of these were excavated in the 1970s. The industrial and temple zones in the southern and western edges of town, excavated from 2003 to 2007. And the springhead, with its aqueduct feeding life-giving fresh water into the town, first found back in the 1930s and fully dug in 2012. Beyond the town limits, the landscape all around also told its tale of hundreds of years of occupation and exploitation. The Roman quarry on top of Barkham Hill can still be easily seen today. Barkham slopes were also a source of bracken, dried and used as carpeting on top of clay floors. Other small quarries along the stream beds north of the fort were sources of ironstone, limestone for mortar, lead, coal, and of course lots of clay for floor tiles and roof tiles. A fantastic Romano-British temple was found at the far western edge of town in 2001. Cemeteries are known beyond it to the west and far to the southwest on a knoll known aptly as King Cairn Hill. The entire landscape would have been intensively farmed and tilled. Large paddocks for cattle and pack animals no doubt sprawled outward. And tracts of forest would have been the perfect place for pigs to forage. Vendelanda of AD 235 is a great example of a rough and ready prosperity and peace that seems to have taken hold all along Hadrian's Wall in the 3rd century. While civil wars raged on the continent, 
Northern Britain seems to have had a 60-year-long run of peace, lasting until the 270s, when the endless schisms finally reached its shores. When peace returned in the 4th century, life returned to Vendelanda, but its heyday had certainly passed. It's a tribute to a long succession of preservation-minded archaeologists, historians, and volunteers that it's now possible to bring something of that heyday back to life. I hope you enjoyed the video. To explore more of Vindolanda yourself, just follow the links in the description. Thanks for watching!